Hello everyone, and welcome to another fun-filled episode of Eric the Car Guy. I'm Eric the Car Guy, your host, and I'd like to remind you that this video is brought to you by BBB Industries, makers of premium remanufactured alternators and starters that meet or exceed OE specifications in fit, form, and function. And as the title states, today I'd like to talk about shimming a starter. There may be times where you go to install a starter and let's say it there isn't proper engagement, so you might hear excessive like grinding noise, uh, and this is after you install a new unit. Now normally, I like to take the philosophy of if it came with shims, then I wanna put those same shims back in, but this may not often be enough. So in this video, we're gonna cover the process step by step and how you go about measuring the actual clearance between the armature and the flywheel or flex plate. Let's go over a couple of techniques of what you might need to do should you need to install some shims on your starter. Behind me, I have a 1999 uh, Chevrolet Tahoe with a 5.7 liter engine. What I'd like to do first is head over to the bench and show you a little bit about what this process involves outside of the car. That way we've got a pretty good understanding of what we're dealing with before we get up underneath. So let's head over to the bench and see what we've got. Here's a starter um, for a General Motors product. And you'll notice when you remove it from the packaging, that it comes with a shim and an Allen wrench. Now this Allen wrench is of the size uh, to measure the clearance that you need to measure. Uh, and just to give you a little bit better idea of what uh, you might be dealing with should you find something like this. So if, if you see the shims, it's a dead giveaway that you may have to uh, shim the starter. Uh, and also if you go to take the old unit off, uh, there may be shims that come out of there. And once again, uh, you can reinstall the old shims However, that may not be enough. Okay, here's an old starter that I've already taken off of a vehicle. Uh, and here is a flex plate that I have. Now this flex plate does definitely not go with this starter, but I'm just using it to illustrate the process of where you would insert this Allen key uh, in order to take your measurement. Okay, when you take your measurement, you wanna take it in between the ring gear here on the flex plate or flywheel and you want to check the clearance between it and the armature shaft. So when you slide this Allen key in or eighth inch drill bit, you want to make sure that you have about that amount of clearance. You got that, you're good. If not, you're going to shim according to uh, what you need. Now that we've got it supported on jack stands, let's go under and have a look. Here's our starter and as you can see, it does have a removable plate to gain access to the fasteners for the uh, torque converter. However, it doesn't have the old traditional style where you can remove this whole lower half of what is now the bell housing. So it's, it's gonna be very difficult to try to insert our uh, Allen key or drill bit into uh, that space to take our measurement. So in this case, we're gonna use paint. My task now is to remove the starter, take it over to the bench, paint the teeth on the dry gear of the starter, then reinstall the starter, then start the vehicle a few times, then remove the starter, take it back over to the bench, and check the tooth contact pattern on the dry gear. Now that I have my starter off the vehicle, I borrowed some of my daughter's paints, and I'm gonna use white, just cause it's easy, or what's left of white. And just a regular paintbrush here. I have this little pick, just gonna reach in, and you don't need to paint around the entire area. Um, I think all you need to do is just get a few teeth because you're just looking, looking for the contact pattern once again, just to see where it sits. It's a water-based paint. It's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, that should be enough there. Once again, we're just looking to see where the teeth will make contact. Here's a thought. Say if you're faced with the prospect of the possibility of having to shim uh, a starter. You might want to paint this before you ever install it on the vehicle. That way, if there is an issue uh, and you don't have access like I don't on this engine, uh, that you would already have the paint there and you could just pull the starter off and look at the contact pattern and decide whether you need to add or remove shims to, to gain the correct clearance. And now let's uh, reinstall it back on the vehicle. Okay, I have the starter reinstalled. And now I'm gonna start the vehicle a couple of times just to try and basically mark that painted area so that I can see what the tooth contact pattern is.
All right, now that we've done that, let's remove the starter and take a look at those teeth. Okay, so it's the moment of truth. I've removed the starter uh, after starting the vehicle a couple of times, and now I'm gonna take a look at that uh, tooth contact pattern. Here is what I hope to be a good, decent view for you. And you can see in this area here is where it was making contact. Maybe a different color paint. There's actually gear paint uh, that you'd use for like uh, differentials, things like that, and looking at the gear tooth pattern that might do a better job of this. But I can see, at least for me, what I believe to be quite clearly um, where this is making contact, which is exactly where it should be, which is about two-thirds of the way down. Right in this area is what you're looking for. So you don't want it to be all the way bottomed out. If it is, you want to add some shims. Uh, if, the, if it's only making contact up towards the top, you want to remove some shims or just remove one side in order to get this a little bit closer to the uh, flywheel flex plate. And that about wraps it up. Now that you've determined the tooth contact pattern on the drive gear of the starter, you can uh, install it back on the vehicle, reconnect the negative battery cable, and go on your merry way. Uh, if it was off a little bit, then you could adjust these shims, uh, either by adding or subtracting them in order to get correct alignment. Uh, and then of course you go through the procedure again to make sure that you've got it bang on. Uh, and this is a method, obviously, that uh, you know you could employ if you're not able to slip in that eighth inch drill bit or eighth inch allen key in order to take that measurement between the uh, armature shaft and the ring gear itself. Uh, it's just, just another way of, uh, of taking that measurement to make sure that your tooth contact pattern between the starter drive gear and the ring gear is good. If you don't go through this, well, you could damage the drive gear on the starter, or worse yet, you could damage the ring gear. There's, there's a lot of problems that could happen if you don't go through this procedure. So it's one of those things where it's like a stitch in time saves nine. Go through the effort now, save yourself some damage, expense, and time in the future. And that about wraps it up. I'd like to remind you that this video is brought to you by BBB Industries, makers of premium remanufactured alternators and starters that meet or exceed OE specification in fit, form, and function. I am Eric the Car Guy, and you can always find me at ericthecarguy.com, or you can find me on Facebook and Twitter, and now on Google+. And that about wraps it up. So I'm going to close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. Take care, everybody.